Okay, so just before we jump into exporting this, just a few more things that I wanted to show you. So let's say, for example, we are doing some editing in this view. What we've got is we can just grab the edges and we can loop this out and we can tell that it's looping because of these little dots here that tell us that we're looping the same clip. And then what we can also do is we could just duplicate it like we would in session view. But what I want to show you is MIDI effects. So we go to MIDI effects and you see here we've got the scale device and at the moment we are just playing an A so it doesn't matter we don't need the scale but if you don't know how to play the keyboard or you don't know much about music theory then the scale device is the device that's going to help you and MIDI devices in general are really good. So all you have to do is find the scale you want to be in. So say you want to be in C major or C minor or A or you know whatever scale you want to be in. What this essentially does is it chooses you have the 12 notes in an octave uh, and then there's more octaves that make up the entire frequency spectrum. Well, what we do is we choose a certain notes that work with each other within the octave and that's what's known as a scale. So what we can do is we can force a scale and what this is going to do is this is going to see all of the notes. Let's just make sure we've got the right instrument. It's got all the notes in the scale and they come into this device. So you here you see 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. And this note is going to be pushed to a C. And the next note is going to also be pushed to a C. So this C sharp is also going to come out as a C. So it goes in from the bottom and then out from the side. And then likewise we're going to force a scale and what we can do is we can change this to a different scale and we could also get rid of it the shortcuts are really uh, sorry the presets are really good for this so we'll go for a c minor and we could set this to whatever scale we wanted so we'll go for c minor and it just so happens that a is in the c minor scale as we can see there but if we were to play a note that wasn't so if we were to play a note up You see, it's now forcing it to the above note. But we'll play that as it was. So it's just something I wanted to show you if you are wanting to play on the keyboard. Now, whatever I do, it's always going to conform to the C minor scale. So it's a good way of being able to play something good without having to learn the uh, music theory. So that's the scale. The other thing I wanted to quickly show you is automation. And I'm not going to go too in depth in this because we'll cover this in more detail later on. But all I want to do is show you that when you have your arrangement view and you do some editing, what you're really trying to do is you're trying to break up the sort of loopiness of what you've made because all it is is a series of clips that you've taken in from session view and it doesn't sound that great. There's no transitions. There's not a lot of dynamics or builds or anything like that. Not a lot of movement throughout the track. And that is what you'd use automation for. So for example, if we just loop this section here and play it, if we just move some of these controls, we can see we can create a bit of an atmosphere or a bit of tension and release. So all I'm going to do is just something real simple. I'm just going to find a good spot. So I think starting about there is good. I'm just going to right click and click show automation in new lane. And this is now opened up automation, which can be accessed with the A key. Or also we can just press this button here. And it's just hidden away normally to keep it nice and tidy. And all I'm going to do is click. And you can see this says 350 hertz. And I want this to go all the way up to the top. We can give it a nice filter slope as well. And all this is going to do is automate this over time and then afterwards we can set that back to where it was again. So now I'll press play and I'll listen to the whole track. We could even automate other parameters as well but for now we'll just leave it real simple. Just 
get rid of that horrendous edit that I made. And there we have the automation going into the drop. So you can see the power of automation and you can automate as many things as you want as well. And you can also do that not just for instruments, but you can do it for things such as uh, effects as well. So if we were to drop on something like a, uh, let's go for something really obvious, Redux. So if we were to drop this on the kick, we could also automate this as well. So that could actually be quite a cool effect. Let's try it. And there we go. So that is our finished idea. And obviously this isn't a finished track, but I'm just doing this very first part of the course just to throw you in the deep end and get you from absolutely nothing to be able to export your own music in the arrangement view, as well as having a very good understanding of session view. So what we do is we select all of this and this is now all selected. We can even change the BPM if we want to. Usually this is something that I do at the start of the project. But if for some reason you wanted to ramp things up to 140 beats per minute, then by all means you can do that. But let's keep it where it was. We select the project and we can see it's all highlighted there. Go to File, Export Audio. You'd usually want to save it as well. And I suggest you also collect all and save. And what that does is if you've used your own samples, it will keep those samples within the project as well. So if you go moving stuff around later or you go putting your samples elsewhere in a different file, you're still going to have a project that works. So that's really important. And we have this. I'm not going to go into crazy detail on the export settings. I'm just going to show you the very basics, which is PCM. So this is going to let us either export to AFE or WAV. So we'll go for WAV because I think that's the most common or the most used, especially between DJs and the like. And then we can also set the MP3 on as well. So this is going to give us two versions because it can take a while to upload stuff to SoundCloud. So I suggest if it's just a draft version, then you can just upload it as an MP3. And you can also upload it directly to SoundCloud here as well. And other than that, that's the only setting you're really going to need to know. Uh, you can also do things as well, like set it to mono or normalize. And normalizing is just going to bring it up to the very top of the waveform. So this isn't something that I recommend doing unless you're either creating sample packs or you don't really know how to master and you just want to get it louder uh, without actually having to start using things such as compressors. But I suggest you just make music as you are at the moment and then when you come to that sort of stage, then just learn a bit about normalization and compression and limiting. So now that we've got all these settings done, we've highlighted the area we want. We can choose what area we want to select and which tracks we want to select. So here we could check individual tracks or we could just export certain tracks or selected tracks if we've highlighted them by highlighting them here. And then we can choose the area we want to select. So we don't want to do it from halfway through. We want to do it right at the very start till right at the end at 36 bars. And we can see that that's where this goes to here. So it goes to 36 and then to 37. So all these settings are right. We click export. And I'll just call this uh, idea v1 export. And we'll save that. And it's now rendering that audio out. Okay, guys, so that has now been exported. And we can get to that just by navigating to the finder window. And then we can see we have the MP3 version here. And we have the WAV version here. So let's have a listen.
Okay, so we've covered the scale device, automation and exporting in Ableton Live. And you now have the basic knowledge to be able to get hands on with live without having to keep referring back to the videos. However, if you do want to learn a lot more, then over the rest of this course, I'm going to go into great detail into all of the functions and features in Ableton Live. So I'll see you in the, the next videos.